Welcome to Cat and Jess Talk the Best. We're going to be talking about IMDb's top 250 movies from April 12th, 2018. My name is Cat, And I'm Jess. And today we are talking about our Halloween movies. This one is going to be our fourth of four. Um, this is Paranorman, which is an animation adventure comedy film from 2012. This has a 7.0 on 83,875 votes. And I love this movie. <laughs> Yes, this is one of Jess's favorites for Halloween. I mean, just year round. <laughs> it's actually gotten 12 more votes since I put this together last night. Sweet. <laughs> um, Alright, so the spoiler free synopsis young Norman Badcock, Babcock, Babcock. Babcock. There you go. has the ability to speak to, with the dead, and he often prefers their company to that of the living. Norman receives word from his sh strange uncle Pendergast that, or Prendergast, yeah. that a centuries-old witch's curse on their town is real and about to come true, and that only Norman can stop it. When zombies rise from their graves, Norman must summon all his courage and compassion and push his paranormal activity abilities to the limit to save his fellow townspeople. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good synopsis. Not a spoiler free. Not a spoiler in there. Nope. Alright, so it's directed. It's two people. And this is the only one they've done together. So I couldn't look up anyone else. Oh. It's um, Chris Butler and Sam Fell. Uh -huh. Actors are Cody Smith McPhee. Anna Kendrick and Christopher Mintz Plass. I think that's how you say his last name. I don't know. Apologies if I Sounds messed it up. Right to me. Rotten Tomatoes. The average rating is a 7.2, which I think is the highest of have a uh, highest rating of the four. Um, it has an 87%, which is the second highest of the four. So on 175 critical reviews, 153 liked it, and 22 did not. Um, the first fresh one, I thought it was funny. That's why I picked it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Kath Clark, ghoulish, yes. Funny, you bet. Agreed. <laughs> I just really liked that one, because there were some other ones that were like more detailed and stuff, but I just really liked that one. That's short, sweet, to the point. I yeah. like it. Um, Richard Roper, Paranorman, has a unique look that's equal parts old school and cutting edge. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, rotten. Jay Olson, by placing weighty real-world lessons aimed at kids in this specific cinematic world, the gloominess is only intensified. I can see that. Okay. I want to, I kind of want to read the rest of his review to know why, why it's a rotten review. <laughs> yeah. Because you know? that one could be either way. Yeah, I agree. That little snippet. Um, Al Alexander, the only thing animated about it is the animation, which is so spectac spectacular that you begrudge the script for not being equally inspired. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. No, I don't. I liked the script. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I did too. So the consensus... Beautifully animated and solidly scripted, Paranorman will entertain and frighten older children while providing surprisingly thoughtful fare for their parents. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can too. Alright, so the income. The budget for this film was $60 million, which is understandable seeing as how it's stop motion and stop claymation. Motion. <laughs> that yeah, can get expensive. Can, it's like we can get into all of that. Yeah, that can that definitely can get expensive. Um, the gross in the U.S. was fifty six million three thousand and fifty one dollars. So it almost on the U.S. made its money back almost. Um, the international was fifty one million one hundred and thirty six thousand three hundred and forty eight. So it almost made it up to the U.S. That's surprising because a lot of times it's quite a big difference, but that's not a big difference. No, it's not. So the total for the world was $107,139,399. That's quite a bit of money. Um, opening weekend, 
it made fourteen million eighty seven thousand fifty dollars and its all-time domestic rank is one thousand four hundred and sixty six and I couldn't find its all-time highest rank I don't know why it's so low well it came out in August yeah that's what I was saying like these these type of movies should, need to come yeah, out they need in to come out like in October, October because that's when most of the people are going to be going to see it because if you release these movies, I mean, September is acceptable because people are getting into that mood, especially late September, but October is the prime time for these movies. Exactly. All right. So the awards, it did win an Oscar. Mm -hmm. um, it also won 19 other awards and was nominated for 14 awards. So um, it's Oscar, it's kind of far down, so <laughs> A lot of its awards were the animation. Won a lot of <laughs> awards for the best animated feature film. Um, the Annie Awards, it won for character animation in a feature production and character design in an animated feature production. The ASCP, ASCAP Film and Television Music Awards, it won top, top box office films bunch of animation, best animated film in a lot of these categories. <laughs> um, Las Vegas Film Critics Society is another one that won best animated. National Board of Review, it won the Spotlight Award for John Goodman for Argo Flight and Trouble with the Curve. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it was like he was in this movie too. Yeah. I just don't know. He's kind of rocking here. Yeah. That's what I think. <laughs> um, more best animation. <laughs> like, pretty much all of it's best animated It's film. like you really gotta appreciate the animation in this yeah. film. Like, especially with any stop motion film. Because mm -hmm. it takes... So much time. Years yeah. to make it. Um, the yeah. Village Voice Film Poll, it won best animated feature film, but it tied with Brave, which also came out in 2012. Huh. I don't see it's Oscar. Hold on. <laughs> it says it was nominated. Oh, yeah, it was nominated. That's it. I didn't copy that down. Let's see what it was. It was probably nominated for the animation. Yeah. Yep. It was nominated for the best animated film for the Oscar, but it did not win. My guess is that Brave won because it came out the same year. I don't know of any other ones in 2012 that came out animation-wise that would have won that. I'm looking. Oh, you're fine. It's like, I think Brave one. I'm pretty sure it was Brave, because I can click it. Let's see. It's thinking. Yes. Brave one? Yes. That's what I figured. Alright. So yeah. It got looked over. Which is a Disney movie. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the studio that makes this is also the studio that made Coraline. Um, and they made a few other ones that are really good. Stop. They do really good stop motion. This, I don't remember Coraline, what studio it is. Um, it's Focus Features. That's and it. then the sub, like, the sub little thing underneath it is Laika. Yeah. L-A-I-K-A. Yeah. That's it. I'm just remember. They do a lot of stop motion. Um, Coraline, Paranorman... Box Trolls, which came out, um, Kudo, Kubo, and yeah, the Two Strings. That's right. A lot of people think that's their best. Which one? The Kubo and the Two Strings. I wouldn't agree. I don't agree either. I've seen bits and pieces of that. I haven't seen the whole thing, but I like Coraline better than Kubo and the Two Strings. And I'm gonna be see. I, I like Paranorman just a smidge more than Coraline. Just a smidge. They're like right neck and neck most just, of the time. To me, Coraline was creepier and gave me more... Because I'm not big on the animated Halloween films. Coraline is one that I really, really like. It's a little different from the book, but... I've never read the book. Good book. It's cute. In a dark way. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a very dark story. True. <laughs> so, initial thoughts. Uh... Gosh, when I first watched this, well, again, I'm a big fan of stop-motion films, so 
it's already going to be like high for me. And then just like the story, it's a really cute story, and I can yeah. totally relate to to Norman. He's just like kind of an outcast, kind of by himself. He's different. Can relate to that really easily. And you know, like you always like, I just me would that would be cool talking to like the dead. <laughs> it would, yeah. especially like like if like. A grandma or someone that you that you lost and they're still here. You can still talk to them. I think that's cool. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, the beginning of it was kind of meh for me. Didn't really. I wasn't big on the beginning, but once it got more into the creepy witchy zombie stuff, that one. That's when I was a little bit more interested in it. So like the first. 20, 30 minutes of the movie, I wasn't that entertained by it. I was playing on my phone. <laughs> well, it wasn't that long. I don't remember how long it was. It was like <laughs> the beginning of it, and then once it got to where like the zombies and the witch came in, that's when I was more interested in it. Okay. I can see that. I can. But yeah. Um, that's all my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> So that was your warning. If you haven't watched the film yet, then stop listening and come back after you've watched it. I didn't really get the beginning movie. So it's the beginning. It's supposed to be like a really, really, really bad zombie movie. Well, no, I got that. I just that he's didn't watching on TV. Why he didn't understand it. I was like, this Norman, is... you'll learn later. He likes zombies. Oh no, I saw that. Yeah, he likes zombies. That's. They actually had to think of how to make a really bad, like, yeah, zombie movie. Yeah, I read movie. that. They were like, they said they struggled with it because they had to figure out bad camera angles. Bad camera angle and, and bad, like, like there's a boom that came the into, boomstick. like, yeah. the the screen and the person had to push it up. Like, yeah. the zombie was walking too slow and she had to keep screaming. Then yeah. she had to catch her breath and to keep screaming again. It yeah. was a really bad zombie movie that Norman's watching. And you see that he's watching it with um you hear this voice asking like what's going on yeah she doesn't get it <laughs> she's like, that was me i didn't get it <laughs> it's like what's going on what's you know and you see that she's it's his grandma well because i was like i was really confused as to why it was just a square at the beginning i was like i'd freaking be pissed if this whole movie is just this little tiny square <laughs> that i have to watch i'm gonna be so mad i just got a brand new tv and i have to watch this tiny movie on this brand new tv i was so mad but then it went to like the actual movie i was like oh okay <laughs> that's acceptable <laughs> it was just a little sh short little bad movie that he was watching on tv yeah watching with his grandmother <laughs> except she's kind of like a green kind of yeah shade to her and you find out that norman's the only one who can really t see and talk to her yeah because she's because dead. she's dead yeah and so his like, you meet the rest of the family like his dad and his mom and, and his, his sister, older sister who's played by anna kendrick yes <laughs> it's so weird hearing hearing her Really? It is. Because, I mean, the only thing I've really seen her in are the um, Pitch Perfect movies. She was in Trolls. I haven't watched Trolls. You haven't watched Trolls? Didn't feel like it. It didn't interest me, the trailer. It's so freaking cute. The trailer didn't really interest me, so I didn't want to watch it. Oh, well, it's cute. <laughs> but again, I hang out with little kids all day, so I had to get into that. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw the trailer for Trolls, and I was just like, it doesn't really... I mean, it would interest me if I was little, but... I'm or, just not interested in Or that anymore. you hang out with kids all day. And if you don't get the reference, they they get, they're like, aww. They get all sad. They do. Kids get sad. Sick. So, and they, the family, you meet them, and they think Norman's a little crazy because mm -hmm. they know that he can talk to people dead that are people. dead. And because his grandma's like, can you tell your dad to turn, was it turn up the heat because she's cold? Yeah. And they're like, she's dead. She's not here. Of course she's going to be cold. She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and family, the, the family's trying to convince him that he's wrong. And they, they just don't really understand him. Yeah. 
They don't. So it makes me kind of sad. And the parents are arguing because his mom's like, you just gotta let him be. And his dad's like, no. It's like, no, we gotta get that out of his head. It's like, <laughs> it's like he, he gets been, has this, like, ability. I don't think you should be, like, trying to stomp it out of him. Yeah. And then it jumps to, like, this creepy sick guy who has all kinds of pictures of Norman. Well, it's his uncle. Well, they don't specify that until later. <laughs> It's like, they're like, they're, cause the they parents it's... are talking about his uncle, and then it jumps to them, so you get the hint of it, but yeah. it doesn't exactly say that. And so yeah. it's kind of... It's his uncle. It's just kind of weird. Yeah, it's his uncle, Prendergast. Ghast. Yep. And he's the one he can see ghosts to. Yep. Um, and then you find out Norman's obsessed with zombies, because mm-hmm. you see his room. <laughs> his room, his toothbrush, his slippers, which I think are super cool. He's on his way to school, and he's, like, talking to no one. <laughs> It seems like he's talking to nobody. Yeah. And the but actual he, people think he's crazy. But to Norman, he's actually talking to all these people. Like, yeah, he's talking to all the ghosts. Yeah. I like that the ghosts are green. Yeah, it helps give a nice distinction between mm-hmm. the living and the dead. Especially in a movie with this with so many colors. If you just made them, like, white ghosts. It would blend in. Yeah. It would. I and, like the green. And I, you notice that the town is... Obsessed kind of, with witches. Obsessed with witches. I like the witchy wieners. <laughs> I wear that now. It's like there's this whole reason why they're obsessed with um, witches, of course. But you don't find that out for just a little bit. It seem, To me, it seems like it's in like the Salem-type area. Kind of. It's a fictional town, but yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, but like based in the Salem-type area. Yeah. Which is kind of like Hocus Pocus. Yeah. <laughs> Except for Hocus Pocus is based in Salem. <laughs> yeah. So, you see that Norm is like an outcast at school, too. Like, there's people, he's got a freak written on his locker. Mm-hmm. He already knows how to clean it, which is sad. And there's a kid across the, the hallway that his locker says fatty on it. So, he's kind of an outcast, too. Oh, we missed the creepy guy staring at Norman from across the street outside school. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> That's, Yeah. He's just staring at him. Just staring. It's like, okay, that's kind of weird, but all right. So then they're at play rehearsal, like rehearsal for their production or whatever they're doing. I guess it's about the town history is what it seems like. It's called, the town's called Lith Hollow, which is a combination of two places. Stars Hollow and something else. (laughs) (laughs) Oh God, not Stars Hollow. (laughs) Um, yeah, it's funny, <laughs> it's funny the teacher is like complaining about the inaccuracies, and then the little girl she asks, she's like, I don't think all the witches were this ugly. And then she, the teacher goes, it's not supposed to be accurate. It's like, okay, but... <laughs> like, what were you just saying? Okay, so it's Bliss Hollow and a witch. So the witch is, she was hung and she put a curse on the people who sent her to her death. Yeah. And then they'll rise, you know. They'll yeah. rise on this on the day that she was killed, I mm-hmm. think. On the witch's anniversary. Yeah. Um, then Norman sees, like, starts seeing, like, these things starting to, like, change a little bit. No one else sees it except him. Yeah. And then he, um, he gets kind of scared, and then they're all just kind of staring at him. They're like, this kid's freaking out. Like, what is this the crazy problem? kid's freaking out. Just ignore him. <laughs> <laughs> and then the gar- then you see the like the okay, I have to say the little fat kid. Yeah. So his name's Neil, and he wants to be Norman's friend. And mm-hmm. like Norman's like Neil, I keep telling you, I like to be by myself. But Neil's like he's like trying to be friends with him because he's like yeah. a sweet little kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they're like on their way. They're walking home together. Norman's trying to get it, get rid of him, but um, his creepy uncle comes and talks to Norman <laughs> and doesn't want anything to do with Neil. Yeah, he's like trying to tell like Norman's like you know the witch's curse is real and you gotta help you have to stop it. And <laughs> Neil's like uh, go away. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's funny. He goes, "Don't make me throw this hummus. It's spicy." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his hummus lunch is spicy. I see how miss. Like, yeah. Huh. And then, um, they get back and Mitch is, Mitch is Neil's older brother. Yes. And the way they have Mitch's head shaped, mm-hmm. it looks like he doesn't have a brain because it's like 
cut off right his right in his eye. <laughs> well, he really doesn't have one. He doesn't, one. but it's just like there's his eyebrows, and then it's the top of his head, and that's like there's nothing else there, and his brain has to be like the size of a pea. And he's like a really big, like bulky dude, and everything. Like, yeah, it's his older brother, and because Neil wants to um, see if Norman can see his dead dog. Yeah, which is buried in the backyard. Of course, Norman can see the dead dog, except the dog's, like, in two parts. Yeah. Because it got run over. And, um, he explains to Neil why there's ghosts, and he says that they either, um, died in a tragic way, which, of course, the dog died in a tragic way, got cut in half by a car. Yeah, that's um, pretty tragic. Or they have unfinished business, and they can't move on. So, um... Neil can't see his dog, but Norman is watching Neil play with his dead dog. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is cute. And there's this cute little bit. He's like, try, Neil's trying to give his dog a kiss on the <laughs> nose and that's not his nose. Yeah, it's his butt. It's his butt. <laughs> it's just cute. Um, so they're becoming friends. And then it jumps to the creepy guy. Brenda Gast. Yeah. I just like calling him creepy guy. <laughs> Who is voiced by the same guy that voices, it's a uh, Monsters, Inc. Sully. John B. Sullivan. Yep. Or Sully. John yeah. Goodman, of course. Yeah, Monsters, Inc., yeah. I love John Goodman. It's like, wonderful. Anytime he talked, all I saw was Sully, and I'm like... Because <laughs> <laughs> that's just what I know. I know him as that so yeah. well. So that's just what I saw. <laughs> so I had to call him creepy guy or I would see Sully. You're like, creepy guy. <laughs> yeah. So he is like doing something and he's holding his book and he like falls over and almost dies. And then he gets back up. He says, nope. And then he does die. He's like, not yet. <laughs> and then he dies. Yep. And then his ghost flies up. Yep. And then you go to the play. Yeah. The play was awful. Yeah, some owl is like up in the rafters and yes. then it comes and lands on Neil and then the room starts to like dissipate and he's transported into the 1700s. Yeah. It's like he is he's not really trans he's just kind of it's like Yeah, in his mind. Yeah, he is. And he freaks out. <laughs> he sees the the trial, like the judge and like the witch and all of that. He says the says the dead are coming. Yeah. <laughs> like Norman just like flips out and like jumps off the stage and his dad's like, oh god. Yeah. And then um, the next day at school, I'm guessing, he locks himself in the bathroom stall. Uh, yes. The bully is in the stall next to him and can't spell his name. His name's Alvin, but he can't spell it. Yeah. He definitely doesn't have a brain. No brain. And he's McLovin. Yes. Um, so he's in the bathroom and weird stuff starts to happen, like the toilet starts to bubble and, and then like the toilet paper's like f like flying around and yeah and the creepy guy is now a ghost and he comes and talks to him and uh he says that the witch's curse is gonna happen tonight and he needs to read from the book to stop the witches he need to read from the book in my hands he's like you're not holding anything he's like in my it's my other my body which is starting to smell a little bit yeah <laughs> And it's like you have to read the book at the spot where the witch is buried. Yep. Okay. To stop the witch's curse. And yep. uh, the bully, Alvin, comes out and he's like looking and the door kind of explodes out. And he goes, you're going to want to give that a minute. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was cute. And he has the Halloween ringtone. Yes. The theme for the ring. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Yeah, because his parents are going out and he has to stay home because uh -huh. his sister is watching him. Yeah. And um, he asked his grandma why she stayed. And she said because she promised she'd always look after him. I thought that was cute. So cute. Makes me sad. Yeah. And she's like, she's like, she convinces them. Like, there's, I'll say my line for our favorite lines. But she convinces him to go read the book. Mm -hmm. So, I wrote weird dancing, but I don't remember why. It was break dancing. Alvin is trying to oh, press these yeah, two right. girls. That's right. I figured you would be able to remind me why I wrote it. I've seen this like, you know, like a few times. So he like, <laughs> Norman like rides past him and messes up Alvin. It's break dancing. To go get the book. 
And then he goes to what he thinks is the witch's grave. He has to get the he gets the book out of his hands, which is kind of funny. Yeah, <laughs> he's literally having to like to pry it out of a dead person's hands who's already had rigor mortis set in. Yeah, so he's really stiff. Yeah, and he like falls the body just like falls on top of him. He's like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, and he thinks he has the wrong book because it's like fairy tales. It's a fairy tale. But then later on you find out it's the right book, it's just the wrong grave. Yes, he goes He goes to the old graveyard, he thinks that the witch will be there. Yeah. And, and um, you know, Alvin comes and distracts him yeah. while he's and there. Yeah, and so the dead rise. And then you see Courtney, which is Norman's brother, is looking for Norman. And he meets Neil's brother, Mitch. And she thinks he's hot. Of course. And then Alvin and Norman are running from the zombies. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, can I say something really quick? This made me laugh so hard. I had not noticed this at first. This is like, I've watched this a lot. And I just noticed this part. So when Courtney is talking to Mitch, she's got like, you know, like a little like, um, sweatsuit on, you know, uh -huh. like with the zipper and everything. She zips down her, sh her top of her jacket <laughs> just a little bit. And I was like... Really? Wow. <laughs> I caught that. And I was like... That's, I didn't notice that. I was like, oh, that's a flirty move right there. Yeah. And it made me laugh really. I, I just had to say that. Because yeah. I was like... I had that, I caught it that time. So... Yeah. I thought it was funny. <laughs> um, so they're hiding in the house. Prendergast's house. Yep. From the zombies. Um... One zombie loses his ear. <laughs> <laughs> Norman, like, moves like, it Pushes back. it over. I thought that was cool. And, like, Alvin, like, runs for it. Yeah. And then they're both running in the street as Neil and Mitch and Courtney are coming in the van to find them. And, um, they almost hit Alvin and Norman. Norman but then they he, like, swerves and he hits uh, the zombie Zombies, instead. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny the zombie's head falls off too. He's like, he's like, I think he's still real, still breathing. His head falls off. No, no, it's not. <laughs> so they're like running in the in one of the co the cop lady. <laughs> she's funny. Uh, she uh, is chasing them and she's like trying to wreck them off the road to get them to stop. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, the van wrecks and it, like, rolls perfectly into a parking spot, but then it just falls apart. Yeah. And while they're riding in the car, of course, there's a zombie, like, latched onto, latched the, onto the car. And Norman's talking to one of the, like, a friend of his, the one of the girls, and she's telling us, like, well, the witch was probably buried in, like, an unknown, like unmarked grave because yeah. she wasn't a person anymore yeah. after she was, you know. She's like, didn't you listen in fifth grade? <laughs> so it's like, go to the town hall. There's probably a record of her, you know, her burial place. Yeah, there. her death and her burial. So that's why, yeah. The zombies trying to get in, everything. Into yeah. the van. <laughs> so then there's this guy, he's trying to get chips out of the, the vending machine and he's like he sees the zombies at the end of the alley he's like looking back and forth between the chips and the zombies it's like back and forth it's like suspenseful he's like oh my god they're coming but my chips are coming too yeah and so he runs off before the chips fall but then the chips fall so he runs back and grabs them <laughs> and then runs off again Yep, and like the zombies, like they're walking, they walk into town, and they they see like all this modern stuff, and they're like, "Oh my god!" They're so afraid. They're freaked out. Yep. And then the people are like, "Oh my god, zombies!" Yep. So the people and the zombies are fighting. Yep. In the Hall of Records, they they go to the Hall of Records, and it's huge. Huge. And Neil takes twenty minutes to read twenty six pages. Yeah. I mean, like, Norman is, like, the smartest one of this whole entire group. Yeah. <laughs> um, Neil has some pretty witty lines, though. Yeah, he does. Um, so, Neil gets, or no, Norman gets mad at everyone because they're not really helping him. They're really just complaining. Yes. So he gets mad and everyone leaves. And, like, the people in the town are trying to break down the doors. Yeah, they're setting fire to the building. 
Because yeah. this is what a mob does. Yeah. <laughs> and then Norman somehow manages to get to the roof. I don't quite remember how. I don't know if it showed it or not. But he's somehow on the roof. Yeah. And then he's like trying he to c- read the story. And because there's like this green ish storm. Like, storm. And then you see like the kind of like a witch's, witch's face. face. And he's reading the story and she's just laughing. Mm-hmm. She attacks him. To like shoot something, like read the book, and he falls. Yeah. And you see, you find out that as he's falling, like. He kind of falls into the past, like in his mind, like he did yeah. earlier. Yeah. And it's. Um, what happens was, it's the witch is just a little girl. Mm hmm. Just a little girl, and she's just like Norman. Yeah. She could talk to, you know, dead people too, and the people were just scared. They didn't know what to do, so they thought she was just a witch. And yeah. so they took her away and. And some. Uh, Norman, Hunter. like, bitches out the zombies. He's yeah, like, he's like, how why could did you? you do this? It's like, she was just a little girl. Yeah. It's like, well, I can see. I mean, they're like, they were scared. Yeah. The zombies say that they want him to stop the curse. And that's what they've been trying to get him to do the whole time. And they say that they were wrong and they shouldn't have done it. Yes. They um, felt so bad. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's good. You have some remorse. Yeah. And so Norman and the zombies go out and try to get the town to stop being an angry mob. <laughs> that was funny. Cordy's yelling at them. Yeah. It's like, could you could you stop being an angry mob for one minute? Like you're adults. <laughs> you're adults. <laughs> um, so then Norman figures out where the witch was buried. Yeah, because the judge helps him with it, too. Because yeah. his family drives <laughs> him to around. driving around trying to find it. And <laughs> and it's funny, because when you're, like, at Norman's perspective, you can hear the zombie actually talking, but then everyone else's is usually like, <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <They> giggle. <laughs> I'm like, well, I mean, he's the only one who can really understand them. Yeah. So... He's like, yep, they drive... It's, like, in the forest and, like... You can see, like, this big green swirling thing mm-hmm. in the middle of the forest. And so Norman goes in and, like, tries to talk to the little girl. Her name is Agatha. Yeah. She goes by Aggie, though. He talks to her, tries to talk to her, and... He starts... She's like, I don't want to hear that story every year. Like, I'm going to end this. And he, he's like, I have a different story to tell you. And he starts telling the story about her and what happened yes. to her. And she's, like, attacking him this entire time, too, yeah. trying to get him to stop telling the story. Yeah. He's, like, he's trying to remind her because she's just forgotten she's so, who she, she was, yeah, really. Yeah, she's so caught up in the fact that these people did this to her that she can't remember what exactly happened. Yeah. It's like she forgot who she was, so he's trying to remind her that there are good people out there. Like, yeah. it's like there has to be someone that was good to you and everything. Yeah. You remember his, after all that? I thought it was a really cool effects right there. Yeah. They did a really good job with that part. Some really good effects there. And then Norman stops the curse. Yeah, because. After she stops the curse, she turns back into, like, a normal little girl. Uh-huh. And she's sitting under this tree. That's where she was buried. She yeah. says her mom took her to that tree all the time. Yeah. And that's where she is. She's, like... And then she just, like... She sits down with Norman. She just, like, leans against him. Just falls asleep and fades away. Yeah. Which I thought was really nice. Then, like, the news or something is interviewing everyone. And Courtney is trying to get Mitch to go on a date with her. And he's like, you know, my boyfriend would like you. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh, <laughs> surprise. Yeah, that was a surprise. It's like, surprise, brother's gay. Yeah. It's like, and then at the very end, like, after all of that, um, you know, Neil and Norman, friends and everything. Uh-huh. Alvin is still trying to hit on Courtney. <laughs> of course. And then, like, at the very end, you see the family. Um, you see his dad. And his grandma sitting next to each other on his the dad, couch. Like, his dad, like, is your grandma here? And, he's, he, and Norm's like, yeah. 
And he turns to, like, thinks he turns to her. He does, actually. Yeah. He's like, hi, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was cute. And she just kind of grins a little bit. And it's like, yep, and they're watching, like, a... Yep, another... and they all sit down and watch the really bad zombie movie. <laughs> really bad zombie movie, yeah. <laughs> all right, so music... I was struggling finding music on these movies. I don't know why. Well, I mean, you know, there's a Halloween theme. Yeah, there is the Halloween theme. Which is by John Carpenter. Um, there's not really anything to compare it to that I know of. Not really, no. I couldn't think of anything. So, trivia. So, this is, um, it's based in the town of Blith Hollow, which is a combination of two ghost stories. So, um... You have Blith Spirit, which is an Oops ghost story, and The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Oh. Uh, Make sense there? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Oh. Then, of course, since this is a 20, uh, 2012, we finally get some good technology in. Yeah. A lot of the faces were 3D printed. Oh, cool. Right? I think that was cool. Except for the zombies. Yeah. Zombies kind of have to have more of like a waxier, kind of more silicone skin to it. Yeah. So this one, I love this actress. I forgot she had passed away. Um, So this is the final film of Elaine Stritch. Stritch? She played the grandma? Yes. Before she died. Hmm. So this is like one of her last films. Gotcha. Yeah. Of course, we mentioned the Halloween theme song. Yeah. Um, of course, I would notice that. Of course. Halloween okay. is one of my favorites. I'm super excited for next week. Oh, I know. I got, let's see, I got, I think two more will work. So, um, Mitch, of course, he's uh, openly gay. Mm -hmm. No, you don't really find that out till the end. But in the kids' movie, that's like a first. Yeah, not any other ones that I could think of that it... Yeah, I think, I think it was a first, for sure. And, of course, um, so, Uncle Prendergast. So, in the story, we didn't mention it, but Agatha's last name was also Prendergast. Yeah, that's right. And so, there's probably a good thing that they're probably related. Yeah. And that means probably Norman and her are related. Yeah. Distantly. But yeah. That's about it. Cool. So, favorite line. Oh, God, there's so many. <laughs> uh, I, get, I have mine written down. I have mine too, but oh, go okay. ahead. You go first. Uh, not now, Neil. I like to be alone. Oh, so do I. Let's do it together. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Uh, I already said the hummus one. Don't mm -hmm. make me throw this hummus. It's spicy. Um. Yeah, but I thought my idea was less likely to get us eaten. <laughs> a lot of mine are from Neil. Of course. He was funny. Um, oh, the cop, she goes, What do you think you're doing firing at civilians? No, that is for the police to do. No, it's okay, Sheriff. We're only firing at the dead ones. <laughs> um, and then Norman, Sometimes when people are scared, they say and do terrible things. Yes. That's it. So I got a couple. Um, this is from his dad. It's one thing about being a mental case in front of your family, but not in front of the whole town. I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> and then this is between Norman and his mom. It's like, Norman's like, you're embarrassing me. And mom's like, that's my job. Yeah. You took my cop one. Oh, sorry. Um, Prendergast says to, um, I think it's Norman or Neil. He's like, do I look crazy to you? <laughs> yes. And then, uh, this is my favorite one. There's nothing wrong with being scared. Just don't let it change who you are. Yeah. That's my favorite. That's kind of, that kind of goes with my, my sometimes when people get scared, they say and do terrible things. Mm-hmm. I like my grandma line. What's the grandma line? There's nothing wrong with being scared. As long as you don't let it change who you are. Yes. That one just hits home for me. So our rating, what'd you give it? I give it an eight. I gave it a seven. I give it a solid eight. I love the story. It's 
wonderful story. I watch it all the time, besides during October. <laughs> and this is the animation, like the stop motion, just in general. It's, yeah. it's got to be one of my favorite types of animation. Yeah. Because it takes so much time and so much dedication. And you have to be, it's like, it's art. It's an art form. It is. It really is. I mean, I've watched, like, little documentaries about how stop motion works. And it's just amazing. Because there's so many little things that go into it. Especially for a movie. Paranorman's an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay? That took at least three, four years just to film all of that. Yeah. So, I just give it. Because I have to do every little movement. You have to move every little thing, and you have to film every little movement, so. Yeah. And there's some scenes where there's a lot of movement. There is. So that must have took forever, so. Yeah. Appreciate that. Just, wow. Yeah. Um, I gave it a seven because, like I said, the boring, the beginning kind of bored me just a little bit, but then it really did pick up, and I liked it a lot. Just not really a big fan of the animated Halloween movies, but this one's yeah. actually pretty good. Good. I like to hear that. Yep. I was like, well, is, <laughs> would you consider Nightmare Before Christmas? That's Halloween and Christmas. But do you like it? Yeah. Okay. That's still one of my dad's favorite movies. Oh. So. That's a good one. I love it. I think that one and... Um, Coraline are really the only ones that I actually enjoy watching that are animated. Alright, so our next event is going to be our holiday episode and it will be released on Christmas. Um, that episode will be four of our favorite holiday films to, from each of us, like this one was. Um, my two choices are Gremlins from 1984 and How the Grinch Stole Christmas from 2000. And my two choices are Elf from 2003 and Miracle on 34th Street from, oh, let me get to here. It's, it's an older, it's from like 1930s. Oh, 30? I thought it was the 60s. Ne sorry, 1947. 47, okay. Well, yeah. it was I've, seen that one. I've actually seen all four of these. So have I. Yay! <laughs> I would have been upset if you hadn't seen Gremlins. <laughs> I love the Gremlins. Oh, that's a funny classic Christmas movie. Yeah. I mean, and then How the Grinch Stole Christmas with Jim Carrey. Yeah. All right, and I think that's all we got for our Halloween episode. Our Halloween episodes. Yes, episodes. All four of them. Of... Hope you enjoyed. Yes. I hope you enjoy the movies. Have some to add to your Halloween collection. So happy Halloween. Yes, happy Halloween. If you pay for premium, you will get uncut episodes, early release of the episodes, which they'll come out on Monday instead of Friday. And then also you'll get a special monthly episode uh, once every month. We'll put something out. And that is at a dollar a month. And then for $5 a month, you will get all of those, plus be able to be in your choice of a movie for every 50 movies as long as like you get there in time <laughs> yeah hopefully you get there in time um but you'll get to join us for up to five movies if you pay five dollars a month and then we're still running our contest um one person out of every 10 that leaves a positive written review will be randomly selected to join us for a movie of their choice so get to leaving reviews yes they help us so please Yes. And where to find us? So you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Cat and Jess Talk the Best. Our email is Cat and Jess Talk the Best 250 at Gmail. And our website is Cat and Jess Talk the Best dot podbean dot com. Yep. And you can find the show pretty much everywhere now. Actually, yeah. yeah everywhere. Pretty much. iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher. Uh, and also, every episode forever will be on Podbean. So if you ever feel like you want to go back and listen to the first one, and we're on like number one ninety eight, you can just go back and listen back to Podbean and listen. And our opening music is by Audio Binger. So any music we ever have, 
um, is by him. You can find him Facebook, YouTube, and he has a website, audiobinger.net. Yeah, check and him out. Right, bye. Bye. There, she has a porg. I do have a porg. He's so cute. Ha, ha, ha.